The Life Team is a perfect example of the three blue light services within Sheffield working together and taking forward the partnership work that we've been doing for quite a few years now. It's a team that consists of two PCSOs from South Yorkshire Police and two members of staff from South Yorkshire Fire working together and they'll undertake a number of things that will target the most vulnerable in society. So they're going to look at home safety checks, they're going to uh, do some falls pickup service on behalf of Yorkshire Ambulance Service and they're going to look at reducing risk of falls in the home and provide some crime safety advice. This is just taking place in Sheffield at the moment. This is a pilot uh, that we're running for the next six months to look at what the success of something like this could uh, do to reducing waiting times and the pressure on police officers and paramedics in Sheffield. Is there a lot of pressure on, on South Yorkshire Police and the fire service? Yeah, there's a significant amount. And what we found is a very strong relationship between those that the police and uh, the ambulance staff attend and those that are most at risk from fire. There's been 131 fire deaths over the last five years across Yorkshire and Humber. And when that's a cost of about £1.65 million each to the local, local economy, it's really important that we're able to look at those who are most vulnerable and actually do something to prevent them dying in fires and to make their lives better. So uh, I take it this is going to ease off some pressure on the 999 call line as well, right? Yeah, that's the aim. We've got the University of Huddersfield who will be looking at as an independent assessment of the work that's being done to look at the impact of this team. And if it's successful, then we'll look at rolling out across the rest of South Yorkshire. But surely there's a, a kind of a similar number in place, the 101 number. Yeah, there is that number in place, but this is a very specific team that will actually go and rather than an ambulance or a paramedic being dispatched to pick up a lady or a gentleman that have fallen and are unable to get up of themselves, put themselves back in their chair, this team will go, they'll pick them up, they'll make sure they're okay, make them a cup of tea, sit with them and spend some time with them, something that actually frontline police officers and frontline ambulance staff, it's not what they're best there for. We'll be looking at the, the high volume, low priority calls, which then frees up frontline police officers and frontline ambulance staff to undertake the high volume, high priority calls. So, so when a person does phone in to the 999 service, I take it, and it is a call for this team to go out there and deal with the situation, um, how will all this take effect then? Uh, what will happen? What's the process? So it's an ordinary 39s call into the Yorkshire Ambulance Service control room and they'll triage the call. So they'll go through a set list of questions to make sure that the person that's phoned up isn't suffering from a medical condition or doesn't require the help of a paramedic or an ambulance service. They'll then dis uh, phone us and dispatch the team and the team will then go and then deal with whatever situation they find themselves in. So, so the, um, the advisor on the other end of the uh, emergency service line will then decide where to pass this on to the relevant team? Yes, that's correct. Exactly the same they do as they do at the moment when, when dispatching an ambulance or a paramedic. They'll make that decision because they're clinically able to make that decision based on the information that the caller gives to them at the time. So just to clarify, this won't take off the pressure from the 999 uh, emergency service line but it will take pressure off those in the emergency services who are going out there to attend to these situations. Yes that's right that what we're aiming to do is to make sure that police officers and ambulance staff are able to deal with the high priority calls and then these, this team will pick up the low priority calls where actually they require someone to go and pick up someone from the floor put them back in the chair someone who's fallen but doesn't have a medical condition. And in total, where are the, uh, how many of uh, staff members are on this team? We've got four staff members, which means that we have two teams at the moment. So this is a pilot which has been funded by South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Authority in partnership with the National Health Service and also Yorkshire Ambulance Service. Is it a significant amount of staff on this team to deal with the situation? Because it's a pilot, we've, what we've tried to do is try and make it something that we can measure easily and we're not going to overwhelm the system. So it's important to start small and then make sure we perfect the system, have some accreditation and some sort of oversight from an independent body who can then say whether this team has actually made a difference or what the difference is that this team has made.